right. All right, all players, go ahead and record Gilding Dungeoneering. See, that's session one. Session one of Gilded Dungeoneering. We're going to start up in five, four, three, two, one, on the clap. Welcome to All Play, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're going to pick up Guild of Dungeoneering today. For those of you not in the know, it is a, I guess you could say it's a kind of a roguelike. It's, it's a game where you go through a dungeon, but you don't really go through the dungeon. You send people through, and you don't directly control which way they go, but you control how the dungeon's laid out. You make them want to go in certain directions. It's a little bit complicated, but uh, we'll get into it in just one second. Let's go ahead and turn on turbo mode. Uh, I'm familiar with this game. I used to play this a while back. I haven't played it in a long time, so we're going to start a new game. We'll just start a new game. Here we go. Here we go. You can see I haven't played it in a long time. It'll be all right, though. We will be all right. Let's start here. Let's save over that. We're good. It'll be all right. All right. This is the Guild of Dungeoneering all across the land. They're cheering, oh, to be a Dungeoneer, chasing fame and glory. The Ivory League of Explorers, the noblest, most virtuous guild in all the land. <laughs> Those insufferable jerks, I'll show them. They won't think me so grossly incompetent when I have my own guild. But a small hall in the bad part of town with the gold I borrowed from them. I've staked out a dungeon that's ripe for the picking. I've even found a chump who'll do all the dirty work while I sit back and watch the coins roll in. Like my father always told me, there's always someone stupider than yourself. Well, he never really said it to me. Actually, he said it to everyone but me. Hey, wait a minute. All right. So we're going to play Guild of Dungeoneering. This is our guild. This is where we, where we are. We need to hire some Dungeoneers. So let's build a barracks. It's a card-based game. You guys know how much I love games that are card-based. The one that's always left behind. The solitary lump. The pawn who's fought our father grind. The sorry little chump. <laughs> all right, so all of the different Dungeoneers, the different characters will send through the dungeons. They all have a class associated with them. This is Eator. He's a chump. Now, each class has different cards in their deck. Different cards that give them different strengths and weaknesses. For example, he might not have any special things about him. We'll, we'll see when we get in. All right, so we can expand our guild to gain new Dungeoneers and new abilities. That's what I was saying about the classes. Uh, the barracks gives us one chump. Different rooms give us different things. Uh, let's see. Let's go on an adventure. We'll go exploring. And we only have this here. What is this here? Oh, this is uh, this is an adventure called Rats. How original. All right, so the first quest is Squeak Squeak. Everyone's got to start somewhere. It's probably just a very basic, basic quest. And that'll be fine. That'll be fine. All right, so we played three cards. What it wants us to do. Oh, it's going to do it for us. Oh, this is going too fast. Let's turn it down. I didn't think it would be that fast. Wow. Okay. Maybe if I restart, we'll go back so we can see what happened. All right. We have the graveyard. I had to kill uh, our Dungeoneer so that we can, we can start again. We can start new. I'll put the graveyard here. This will be the middle of our, our guild. Although this guild seems very grand, a dungeoneer's life can sometimes be hard, not always going as they might have planned. They mostly end up in this graveyard. All right, let's oh. try it again. Oh, and Eodor is dead, in case you didn't know. We'll get another chump. We'll get another chump. There's another chump, Sherry. All right. Okay, so let's try it again. We'll, we'll go explore, and it won't go so fast this time. All right, so it's gonna it's gonna help us do our first turn. 
You got to play three cards. So it plays a place, which is the blue cards. It plays a monster, which is the red cards. And it gives gold an incentive, which is the yellow cards. Our character wants to move towards the gold, but has to beat this duck in order to obtain it and stay alive. Or the rubber ducky. Now, we're given three cards each turn. Or, I'm sorry, we get three cards at the beginning of each hand, and each turn when we use a card, it will be replaced by a new one. And our opponent picks one card to play. We have to pick a card to play that will fight our opponent. Our opponent, Rubber Ducky, just used Anger. Anger will cause one physical damage. That's this red... Uh, that's this fist with the red spikes around it. But it also costs one health to use. So Rubber Ducky's going to lose one health when he uses uh, Anger. So all of these cards, Eyes Closed Punch, they all deal one damage. So I don't really have to pick anything. I'm not really picking. They all deal one physical damage. So it'll deal one and take one from itself because of Anger. And then it also took one damage because of our Eyes Closed Punch. All right. So Rubber Ducky's going to use uh, this turn. Uh, it doesn't do anything. You can see that it doesn't do anything here. Each card has its own traits about it. So, for example, uh, has the Stupidity 1 trait, which means it's not going to do anything. Anger had Irritable 1 trait. It's going to deal 1 damage, and then it's um, going to it's gonna deal 1 damage to its opponent, and then it's going to lose 1 heart, lose 1 health. We want to... Get the opponent down to zero health before we're put down to zero health. I think the opponent always attacks first. So if we use Lucky Hit this turn, we'll cause two physical damage as opposed to both of these eyes closed punch, which will each deal one damage. Let's go Lucky Punch. So we deal two. Rubber Ducky is out of health. Rubber Ducky is no more. And we take the go, the loot. Now uh, we get to pick which loot we have. And again, they all have a trait. They all have traits about them. Uh, so the Paper Crown will give us Holy One, which gives us the blue card, Holy Seal. I can't move the mouse to it, but it's just above the Paper Crown card. It'll move Holy Seal to our deck, which means we'll be able to block one health. I'm sorry, we'll be able to block one attack of any kind. There's physical and then uh, special or magic, the blue side. And every time we block, for every one that we block, we'll gain one heart. There's Twig which does one physical and blocks one physical, and then the newspaper hat, which increases our starting hand size. But we also get uh, Stupidity as one of the cards in our deck, so we got to play smart with that. I'll probably go Paper Crown. It won't be bad to heal. So put on the Paper Crown. We can see our, our character here. We have, we're wearing the Paper Crown. Um, the Paper Crown. Uh, and it gives us, it gives us, what did it give us? It gave us a thing. It gave us Holy One. All right. So this turn we'll pick uh, we'll pick three more cards. Now we want to defeat two monsters. That's our goal here. Defeat two more monsters. We already beat one. We just have to get two more. Now we can only put down blue cards where they make sense. For example, this space here is surrounded by three locations, and each of those locations has a pathway. So in order to put a, sp a card here, it has to have at least three pathways: one leading north. One leading to the east and one leading to the west. One up, left, uh, one up, left, and right. So we could put, we can't put this room there because it only has up and left. We can put both of these though because they have ones going in all different directions. So I'll put the corridor down. The corridor is just a very simple, very basic uh, room. Nothing special about it. So that's one card. Oh, and each turn we play three cards. Up to three cards. Excuse me. Um. Now, this room here is just like the corridor. It has a pathway going in all four directions. The only catch is it has a mysterious fountain. That mysterious fountain, you can see it. Let's see. I'm going to try and beat it. This circle right here, this little thing at the bottom. The mysterious fountain can give me a good benef or a benefit or a curse, a blessing or a curse, I should say. I don't think that's the proper term for it. But it can give me a blessing or a curse. It can help me if I go in that room or it can hurt me if I go in that room. And finally, I can put down monsters as well. The red cards are monsters. Again, they all have qu uh, qualities about them. Uh, one last thing before we go. These clouds symbolize that I have not been on that path, so I don't know exactly what's there. I mean, it's obvious to me, but my opponent might, or my character might not know what's there. And the blue steps, the blue footprints tell where Sherry wants to go right now. Remember, I don't control Sherry directly. I can only influence her to go in certain places. 
With that said, I think I'll put uh, let's put a mysterious fountain here. Okay, so now Sherry wants to go this way. This is why I was talking about the fountain. A fountain can be a good thing or a bad thing. In this case, it's a bad thing. If Sherry were to go into this room, she would be cursed by the fountain of stupidity, and she would gain stupidity too next fight, which probably means that we're getting two cars that don't do anything in there. So I need to influence her to not want to go this way. I can only put down one more card this turn. How about I put the nasty rat here? Yes, perfect. So she was influenced for her to go this way. And now she's fighting the rat. All right, the nasty rat has five health, and he's going to use bite, which does one physical damage, and it's not blockable. This yellow shield means that it can't be blocked no matter what. So since it's going to deal one physical damage that can't be blocked, there's no point in me playing either one of these two right now because they won't work. I'll just play eyes, close, punch, which for all intents and purposes does the same thing as bite. There's claw. Now claw deals one physical damage. I can block this one. So what I'll do is I'll block it with holy seal. That way I'll heal that one damage I lost last turn. Yeah. Another bite attack. Physical damage that can't be blocked. Let's go for the punch. The eyes closed punch. Uh, neurotoxin. It's, it deals one physical damage, and if it's successful, um, I discard a card. I think it's chosen randomly. I don't think I choose which card it discards. In any case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cower. It's going to block one physical. That way I don't have to discard. All right, so when you run out of cards in your deck, just like the opponent did, uh, your discard pile is shuffled back into your deck, and then you draw, it, you, new cards are drawn. Uh, one physical that can't be blocked, so we're going to go with the Lucky Punch. Yeah, yo. All right, just like our opponent's discard pile got shuffled into the deck, so did ours, because we drew all the cards from our deck. So we don't really have a strong deck. We have Eyes Closed Punch, Cower, and Holy, uh, was it Holy Light? I believe it was. All right, Claw's going to be one physical. We're going to do one physical. I should block it, but if I deal the one physical damage, it'll die. Nasty Rat will die this turn. All right, so we leveled up because we took down two monsters, which means we got one more HP for this game. Or this, this adventure, I should say, this dungeoneering. Uh, choose our loot. One stool gives us three cards. One of those is stupidity, though. Uh, we can use the steel to bash. We can use it to repel, which will block. Let's see. Bash will deal one physical and block one physical. And repel will block three physical. That's actually it's actually pretty decent. If you, let's see. We can take a look at the, the traits here, the qualities that each card has. They stack somewhat. So let's look at Ruffle's shirt, which has swift. Swift means that my attack goes before the opponent's. Uh, so that's the one physical, and then I'll draw a card. And then Kappa has fire. Fire are magic damage, special damage. So it's not physical. That's what the blue spikies symbolize. Uh, fire Blast. I actually like Fire Blast. It has fire one. Let's take that. All right, so we got a Kappa in our hands. Okay, currently uh, Sherry wants to go up and fight the Nasty Rat there. I mean, it's not bad. It's, it's really what we came here for. Let's put a room here. Is that? I mean, we can't do too much else, can we? Yeah, we really can't do too, any, too do anything else. Let's just build all these rooms. Uh, here we go. All right. So Sherry's gonna go fight the rat. We're at six health. The rat's at five. It's gonna use claw. So let's. Uh, I'm not too worried about blocking this. We've seen that rats have abilities that we really want to block. I can, I'll take this one. I'll use a fire blast. Those two special attacks. This is the one we need to block, or we want to block. Neurotoxin deals one damage, and if it's successful, uh, we discard a card. So what we're going to do is we're going to Holy Seal. Not only block, but heal it. Yeah, yo. And Bite can't be blocked, so let's go Eyes, close, eyes close Punch. Bite can't be blocked. Here's another punch for your soul. This thing really only has like four attacks, right? I think it was four attacks. Neurotoxin again. Let's block it. Claw. Oh, game's over. Game's over. All right. Well, now, this is just really quite surprising. Thanks to you, I've lost a wager. 
Against all odds, you're surviving. Next time, I hope you find more danger. Congratulations. Despite their best efforts, your little dungeoneer made it out alive. So all there is to do to gather the loot, they risk their lives to collect and flog it for a bit of gold. Okay, so we get gold every time we finish a dungeon. Finish does not mean succeed. If we die, we'll still get some gold. Uh, we explored the map, got nine gold for that, killed two, kill monsters and got two gold. Loot and gear is three gold, and the quest bonus is 50, so we got 64 gold altogether. Uh, bonus, we gained a new battle scar, Trixie. Uh, it starts with level one loot choice. All right. This is dope. All right, let's back to the guild. 